now. They actually just released a new dashboard. So let's have a look at the block. So go to the blockcrypto.com forward slash data forward slash on chain metrics. Um, or actually, go to the blockcrypto.com. Um, and then there's the, we're at the data dashboard, I believe. Um, and here is the brand new data dashboard. Um, two new metrics that I learned about um, was one market cap to transaction fee ratio. So let's see if we can find that for Bitcoin. We've got transactions on the Bitcoin network um, daily. Bitcoin's adjusted on chain volume, seven day daily, monthly. Uh, here's Bitcoin miner revenue, which I really like to see. Um, this is very tangible for people new to Bitcoin to be like, great, Bitcoin uh, miners earn revenue. Bitcoin miners have expenses. How do they pay for those operating expenses? Well, with the Bitcoin they mine. Um, so this is a great Bitcoin chart to track, I think. Keep coming down. Here it is monthly, Bitcoin mining revenue. Then here's Bitcoin transaction fee percentage of total mining revenue. Interesting. Don't quite know what that one means. As it, as everyone should know, at Bitcoin's hash rate, um, so that continues to go up, even though Bitcoin's prices. This is people love this chart when they're comparing it to um, Bitcoin's chart because the hash rate continues to go up, even though we had, you know, 2019 was a bit of a bear market. Um, average transaction fees on Bitcoin. Lightning network capacity, so the layer two solution for uh, Bitcoin. You can also look at Ethereum comparison exchanges. Um, one other metric that I thought was very interesting was um, destination of mining pool revenue for BTC. So somewhere on the blocks dashboards, um, they actually track what the miners do with their with their BTC, whether that goes back to straight to exchanges to sell, to pay for mining expenses. It goes back into mining pools um, or, for, or for other services. And they did note on the webinar, when you see a lot of BTC going to exchanges, it is probable they are going to sell. So if you are on Twitter, you will see whale bots on Twitter that will notify you um, of when massive whale transfers of funds, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whatever. Um, is If you see them going to exchanges like Binance, um, it's, it's an indication they're going to sell. So it was a nice little webinar this morning, and the block released um, their new data dashboard that's public for everyone. Hey, Squanchy, I hope you're doing well. Um, let's have a quick look at the market. I think we're up just slightly, and then we'll dive, in, in, dive into Twitter. Um, let's see who's – oh, yeah, this is our topic of the day, um, and we're going to jump into it right after we check Twitter for just a second. Um, but Filecoin is our story of the day today. Um, they, it just released. We'll do a quick little – have a look at that towards the end of the call. Um, what else? Block stack, Airweave, pretty active um, little morning for Twitter, or excuse me, for, for crypto. Great, Aave um, didn't have a good day. So it looks like a couple of our Aave, Nexus, Synthetics, DeFi hasn't had the best 24 hours. Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin's 11.4. We they've both had very solid weeks. So who knows if we'll see a slight... Um, you know, two to three percent pullback um, in, in the short term. I don't think too much about the short term or the long term. Um, great. So that's the markets. Let's not spend too much time there. Let's go see what the, the theme of the day is, um, especially when we're doing these morning research calls. Let's try to find a theme. Um, what's the sentiment of the industry? Um, what, are, what are the major topics? And we'll, we'll keep track of those. There it is. Um, SBF is already talking about Filecoin, um, so that's hashtag FIL. Where's the support group of file short liquidations? Where, where are the shorters?
everybody's been continually talking about um, this post that I posted. I don't think I talked about it yesterday in the morning research call, but if you can see the fine print, um, let me go back. This guy is the Commodities Future Trading Commission Chairman and Chief Executive. Um, and he said, let me basically say how impressed I am by Ethereum, full stop, period. Um, and he uh, analogized it um, for Bitcoin being email and Ethereum being the internet. So everyone's been talking about that as a great indication from regulators. Squanchy said he missed Filecoin. I did too. Um, we're going to talk about Filecoin. I don't know if we've missed much. Maybe we did. Um, they've actually had IOUs for selling for a long time, as you probably know. What else? Rally. Um, I have only read a little bit about Rally token, RLY. So take a look at Rally. They're looking at um, yield delegating vaults. So definitely a DeFi play. Great. There's definitely ETH Global going on. Um, I'm not quite sure how long that's going on, but if you go to ethonline.org, let's actually just check that out right now. Line.org. Um, I've seen one or two webinars here on ethonline.org. I thought that was just a smaller webinar, but it seems like it's, there you go, Hackathon Plus Summits, October 2nd to October 30th. Uh, let me just take note of that in our morning research call notes. We do have ethonline.org. Um, October 2nd. To October 30th, 2020. Wonderful. Filecoin's the big topic of today. Hashtag FIL. So, yeah, head over to ETH Online. It seems like there'll be um, other summits, hackathons going on. I do want to also mention later in the call, there is an untitled NFT hackathon going on as well. Um, do a search for, I wonder if, I don't know if they'll have a website, but it'll probably be on Twitter. Um, Quite untitled nft hackathon and they have a they have a discord as well so i can try to find that maybe for tomorrow great so let's actually have a look at filecoin now seems like that's the topic of the day um, so we've had the block dashboard, um, ETH online organization, uh, ETH online .org summit is going on. Here is Filecoin. Um, this is a data storage play. So our comparables would be Siacoin um, as well as Storage. Um, so cash tag SIA and cash tag STORJ. Um, let's actually have a look. There's our storage and our infrastructure um, tags. Let's go to their website really quick. We've got a $40 price here for Filecoin. Um, max supply of $2 billion. So look at this fully diluted valuation. We're at a $65 billion fully diluted valuation. Why isn't that? So it's it, that fully diluted market cap is, is larger than Ethereum's market cap. Um, no wonder people are... Hey, Oscar. It, no wonder people on Twitter are calling um, for shorters. I lost that tweet, but there it is. Short it, Sam. Um, this is in response to, this is all making sense now. $40, what a joke. So people will be blindsided by the form. We will have to look at the circulating supply and actually the token tokenomics. Some um, I'll probably look into that later this week. Um, so we got a $474 million circulating supply market cap, the fix 65 billion dollar um, total supply. Let's have a quick look at the chart. As you can see, um, it was actually just released this morning. So it, it was released this morning um, at $30.73. Um, I'll have to find a chart on the historical IOUs. They used to, before we quickly look at the chart, um, they used to have an IOU right near next to the FIL here on CoinGecko. Um, and now that we've so all the way for about an hour and now it's just skyrocketed up and we've hit 108 wow and now we're back down to 93 so let me give this actually a refresh because this is going to jump up oh my god 
we are literally at a $217 billion valuation. Um, that's wild. So I think if you don't own any Filecoin, um, do, do your own research, but um, that's, that's quite a, quite a valuation there. I need to read some tokenomics before I get into it. Let's have a look and see if it's on the storage page already. There it is. So here are our storage coins and our comparables. So we have Filecoin, I already mentioned uh, Sia coin, and also storage. I've done videos on those on YouTube. Those are, in my opinion, the two biggest data plays. And then Airweave is one that's come up recently um, that I don't know as much about. And then I'm not quite sure why BitTorn is there. Let's have a look at infrastructure. And of course, they are the number one on infrastructure as well. I know a lot of people who have been building Filecoin for a lot of years. Um, I'll have to do, get, get, get a little bit more history for you. But what I have heard from Ethereum developers, and you know, you can't always trust developers talking trash on other developers, um, kind of blockchains and works and things, even though crypto is very welcoming. Um, they did say it's very complex. So if there's my one risk is, um, my big risk until I learn more is um, integrations with, with existing um, infrastructure and then also new infrastructure. That's pretty much the story of the day they're on Filecoin. So have a look. Um, I'm sure there's, there's, there's a lot to read here, I'm sure. Oscar asks, what do you think about XOR? The team developed the networks was behind Polkadot and Filecoin. Cool, let's type them in. I also want to show you one other story of the day um, before we talk about XOR. I've never heard of Sora, to be honest. Let's have a quick look. The other story I wanted to mention... Um, Actually, here's Filecoin's website. Filecoin is a decentralized storage network designed to store humanity's most important information. It does make a lot of sense. Um, they've got a great name. We've talked about the block. Um, I wanted to talk about this blog post as well from Andre Cronier, um, obviously one of the builders of YFI. Um, and he released this seven hours ago. Um, so it's a five minute read, really good read. Um, kind of goes into. I don't build for spectators, tokens are not stocks. His development process, um, project value in terms of EMN and LBI, which were two of his projects. He is not wired. He just wanted to make that clear, I think. Responsibility, rational actors, and what the future holds. So have a read of this. Um, I've read half of it. I'm going to finish that later today. Also, something that I found today was chain analysis, the 2020 geography of cryptocurrency reports and us being crypto cartography and me being a map geek. I can't wait to read this. Um, it's actually quite extensive. It's 126 pages, so it's a bit, bit over the top. But what I'm hoping is that they actually break it down by region. So go in there. I'm hoping they have like an abstract. Let's actually just check out Africa. And then they have high level stats. So have a look at this. Um, you can go and download it. And then if you're interested in geography stats on cryptocurrency, those are there and rating for you. Um, that's the chain analysis 2020 geography of cryptocurrency report. So I found that as well. Squanchy says he's sleeping on decentralized storage. Yep. Let me open those coins back up and then let's have a quick look at, sto at, at um, here are the storage coins. Yeah, in my opinion, I'd look at Airweave, Sia coin, Storage, and now Filecoin as well. And I'm sure now that Filecoin's out, I'm sure there'll be a lot of comparisons across the board. I actually am going to drop into the Sia coin uh, Discord later today and see if they're talking about Filecoin. I'm sure there will be. Let's have a look at Sora real quick, um, an Oscar pick. And yeah, Frederick, it is a flamenco shirt. I went down there for Flaflu one year. It was great. We got Sora, $60 price, $20 million market cap. I love it when it's simple and easy token, econo token economics um, and 350000 uh, circulating of the same amount of supply. It looks like it's part of the DOT ecosystem. Let's just look at all the analytics. I actually, for coins that I'm brand new to. I love to see what markets they're on. Um, and lovely, right on Uniswap, and then none of the other. Um, looks like they're a DEX play. The, cent the, the, the centralized exchanges don't really matter too much. 
Oh, it's a new coin, only been around 30 days. Great. Wow. Not the biggest fan of when I've already missed the boat and we've had 69,000% um, increase in, in five months from, wow, from May. These people just made a boatload of money if you held onto these for a while. Um, but good for them. Let's have a look at the market cap. Market cap started in August. And we did start at a $9 million market cap. Okay. So for, for that time when people were buying it um, at a really good deal, um, we really didn't even know all of the information there because um, our, our market cap didn't come out till about $9 million. So there's people that did know, um, it did purchase, say, below, what was that, July 20th is when we first had our market cap. When you look at that, right when the price went up. So those people that did buy before July really had information asymmetry here. And it just goes to show you, um, you could have bought under a dollar for many, many, for a couple of months and then, or for at least a, a, about a month. So let's have a look at what they do. One world, one economy. With its interoperable technology, Sora is working to become the decentralized central, central bank of the world of blockchains. Yeah, this is a, this is a large play. Great Hyperledger, Polkaswap, where so we're providing a parachain virtual bridge to Kusama and Polkadot networks. Cool. So it looks like it's solving interoperability. The SOAR network excels at providing tools for decentralized applications that use digital assets. I'd love to see the team behind this. This is one of those very, um, it's kind of like enterprise SaaS or enterprise software where it's very hard to see the tangible impacts um, from a consumer standpoint. But that's why we need to see what the app looks like. Great, they've got a Sora app. It's already out. Seems like they want to do a lot. We've got an app, we've got a wallet, they want to do interoperability, they want people to build. So it looks like it has a very large vision. Looks like, yep, and Oscar says it's related to Polkadot Filecoin. Squanchy says he's heard great things about it. XOR, so many coins, yep. This one I'd left definitely like to see um, who the team is, uh, maybe hopefully they have some very public information and hopefully they've been working on this um, for hopefully a couple of years or you know at least a year before their actual token issuance back in may used for the transaction fees on the SOAR network. So they are building their own network. Um, that's interesting. So uh, one doesn't look like they have their own blockchain, but if they do have their own network. Um, and oh, there we go. Watch out for this. Supply is capped at 350,000 XOR until, that's a, gosh, that's a bit misleading, until SORA V2 network launch. Um, Supply will be elastically managed by a token bonding curve smart contract with buy and sell price functions. This means that as the token supply increases, the price also increases and vice versa. Hmm. The price will be regulated by the bonding curve, so no extreme fluctuations in the price will be exhibited, but a smooth growth or decline. Hmm. Not quite sure what that means, because um, typically, you know, as token supply increases, you know, supply and price are oftentimes inversely related. Um, so that's an interesting one. We'll have to keep track of their tokenomics. Fair distribution, 300 were split among, were put on Uniswap and people bought them over time. Okay, that's nice. It does sound like a very fair distribution. Decreasing supply used to reward validators on the Sora network. Oh, it's a two-token system. Val, um, so if you do 
participate in Sora, it looks like um, we will be earning Val in some way. Well, all right, it looks like a legitimate organization. Um, looks like it's more Asian focused, just by some of the characters. Cool, I'd have to read more in it, but uh, Oscar, it looks like legit. And then Oscar says they already migrated the Central Bank of Cambodia to work with Hyperledger, that's great. If you go to the Polkadot site, you will see Soramitsu logo listed as one of the five teams who contributed to Polkadot. Awesome. Cool. Good call, Oscar. We'll have to dig deep into this one. So let's add that to our morning research notes. We've got Sora, hashtag XOR, and Val, I believe. Um, so it's a two-token system. Sora. Right. Cool. Let's head back to crypto Twitter and just see what's happening. Um, looking like that's, excuse me, looking like those are the major stories of the day. So let's spend another five or 10 minutes um, and see if we can drill up anything else or any other rabbit holes to dive down. If not, we might jump into Discord and see what Siacoin is saying about Filecoin. Three million trading volume on a $1.5 billion circulating cap. Whales accumulating, right? Yep, everyone's talking about, this is Filecoin. Uh, we were just looking at this. Whales accumulating. Hmm, don't know quite what that means or what he's insinuating there. Let's see if he says. Everyone's going to wait for shorting of this thing. That's for sure. And we're so early with Filecoin. Um, it's because it's kind of there's been IOUs and we're deep in the crypto industry. I think we're still early. Um, I'd look for a major pullback on on that Filecoin price and maybe get in and still have it as part of your 2020 decade portfolio. Um, but I'm going to hold off for a little bit um, until that price goes down. Yep, hopefully you got your core. I know Squanchy, you've been loving core lately, which is great. Um, it's funny you guys are loving steak today. Um, my video is going to be on steak later today. Um, this is something that's interesting. If you don't know about Graph, graph Protocol, um, they're making decentralized applications possible with open APIs. Um, so it's for the data scientists of the world. Um, and I've heard just raving product reviews about the Graph Protocol. I've tried to use it myself, but not quite as technical. And actually, I haven't tried that hard. But, but do check out the Graph. So it's one of those organizations that started out as a... Um, a non-token organization. Now they're actually releasing a token called GRT. So think about GRT as a token as well. Let's actually add that to the notes. Fucking graph protocol. And the cash tag is GRT. Let's take a quick look. I'll show you the website. It'll give you a quick little understanding. APIs for a bright, vibrant, decentralized future. And as you can see from all the pictures, they work with everybody. Um, so it's very, very good data play. I'm unsure what the token economics or what the token purpose is. So keep track of that. Have a look at GRT hashtag. And then the graph, uh, Alex. This Alex is um, creative. The Alex token, a cryptocurrency, letting one, anyone bet on himself. So I think he has, he does participatory things for people that have bought Alex token and they help like pretty much run his life, which is fun. So very cool, interesting, uh, little experiment there. And he's saying graph protocol is an index literally and metaphorically of any subgraph succeeding. Um, so that's interesting. With the launch of Filecoin underway, I'm interested on how the market perceives whether or not it affects chain link. Don't know. How would a decentralized storage network compete with a decentralized Oracle network? They're entirely different technologies. This is something that I think people new to crypto don't see the uh, all of the different use cases, use cases of decentralized technology um, compared to decentralized Oracle networks versus decentralized storage, and they are two different, very two different use cases. We are not listed yet. If you see T Coin, um, El Ch Crypto Chapo who has sixty two hundred followers. He always, he's always talking about a lot of gems, or excuse me, a lot of very early stage coins. He's looking at T-Coin, but it's not on Uniswap yet. Um, it's fake. So it's, it looks like it's a pre-sale right now. 
Oh, something I found yesterday. I'm so happy this came up. This was just so cool to look at yesterday, Yield Wars. Um, have a look at this. They've created a war token. There it is, cash tag war. And let, let's bring it up. This is just so cool. It's such a fun little um, use of your money. I think it is a pull together type strategy. Yield Wars is on CoinGecko. Where here it is. Um, let's go to battle. So number one, you can farm. Um, I, I'm a, looks like you wrap up ETH, WAR, UNI, LP, to, LP tokens. Um, doesn't say anything about APY, unfortunately. So let's go to battle. This is what I found very interesting yesterday. Um, all we do is pretty much stake our, step one, stake our WAR to enter the arena. The arena. Vote for the armies you will fight for. So we've got the Rope Rats, the Mean Pineapples, the Link Marines, the Core Heat. So we've got all our biggest DeFi protocols and NFT protocols, and we're battling against each other. So your staked war is never at risk. So that's where I think it's a pull together strategy. Um, if you don't know pull together, that's a no loss lottery system. Have a look at them. Your stake war is never at risk, but your daily rewards are fought over in battle. Fight with a winning team and win 50% of the loser's rewards. Leave a battle, you don't get counted. Vote once a day, battle ends and starts at these times. War rewards are shown in your account after battles and votes are, t and votes are t tallied. There you go. So here's the leaderboards. We've got about 883,000 votes for the base ghouls. A um, little under that for the uni unicorns, YFL marines. Oh, they've even got YFL in there. The chat apes. So here's the schedule. Um, today's the 15th. Looks like there's the battle for tomorrow. Value Goats, Pickle Ricks. So I believe you go in here, you simply choose either the Value Goats or the Pickle Ricks. And if you win, you've staked your war, you get some of the rewards each day. And then the next day, October 17th, it looks like Cream Pies are going against the SRM Mystics, the Yam Yahoos versus the NSX Spartans. This is a really fun kind of novel experiment for cryptocurrencies, in my opinion. This is not going to be life-changing money also, in my opinion. Hopefully, I'm wrong for some of you war holders. Um, but I think this is just really cool. So this is, the also I wanted to show you was they've actually already had two seasons. They've had results here. Um, or this is season two, excuse me. Let me go to season one. There it is, season one battle history. Um, and it looks like on October 6th, the base schools beat the Link Marines 99% to one. And pretty much at the end of the day, if 99% of the people vote on one side, you're getting 50% of the losers' rewards. So 99% of people theoretically, I believe, have to share 1% of the rewards. So this is this transaction is pretty much useless, but this is not where 64% of the Link Marines earn 50% of the rewards from 36% of the NSX Spartans. That would maybe yield some sort of return there. But we're in, this is season one. Looks like we're in season two is active right now. I just thought this was a very, very fun um, use case for cryptocurrencies that traditional finance just couldn't even come close to. So roadmap, they do have a nice roadmap here. They wanted to have season two. Um, they're looking to have season three and season four. So it's still very early days. It's only season two. And who knows, there could be 100 seasons of this. Very, very cool. And they're actually hiring. So they need a senior solidity dev and a community engagement specialist, meme sticker artist, and NFT artist. So have a look at Yield Wars. Very happy we found that because yesterday I was very excited about when I found that one. Yield Wars War. I'm probably going to get myself some more and just participate just for fun. Surprise drop from Meme Boy. Most drop, just, oh, that's interesting from Meme, being nice and transparent. Most drop from Meme will be announced in advance, but this one was a surprise. Expect the unexpected. Well, don't say that. Very excited to announce center support for USD on Stellar. Stellar still building. I'm joking. I'm very curious if Stellar is actually going to be um, a long-term viable play. Um, I've sold my Stellar, to be honest. I had some, but I just don't know if people are going to be super excited about Stellar in the future if you're already in crypto for a while. But who knows? Hopefully they innovate. 
Wow. Cutter's looking good. At least the stadium is. Oh, Lido. I did want to give you guys a heads up on Lido. I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on with them. Um, I think we're still pre-launch. But this one might be another one to, fo to follow in terms of Lido Finance. And yes, perfect. We're right on top of our stuff here today on the morning research call. They just released their Medium post um, one hour ago. So Lido will not have an ICO, a token sale, a pre-sale, any Telegram group not linked to Lido.fi, but claiming to be Lido was a scam. Blah, blah, blah. Hello world. October 9th is when they started. So head over to Lido.fi. I'm actually going to read this later this morning. And go to Lido.fi. As always, we're on the cutting edge of crypto here on the morning research call. Actually, let's just check it out real quick and see what see where we're at. Yep, Lido is coming soon. So head over, check out their Medium post. Seems like, you know, white papers were, were the big deal back in 2017. Now you can't re release an organization without a solid Medium post. Let's quickly just see what this is. Oh, this is, I think I know what this is. They're talking about staking ETH for um, Ethereum 2.0 when Ethereum becomes a proof of stake organization and not a proof of work organization. Lido is a staking solution. Legends. People are so smart. So it takes 32. Um, it, it says, where is it? Users can only stake multiples of 32 ETH. So obviously, 32 ETH times by, let's say it's 380 today, that's a meaningful amount of money. Um, for your retail to stake and who wants to earn staking rewards in ETH2. So I think this may be a staking solution to solve these problems and backed by several industry leading staking providers. They make staked ETH liquid and all allows participation with any amount of ETH. There you go. So now you and I can give Lido one ETH instead of 32 ETH and we can still earn staking rewards. Um, I'm sure this is another middleman. So you won't get 100% of your rewards like you would if you staked your own 32 and ran your own node, but still better than nothing. Great. Oh, there we go. Frederick says Rocket Pool is better than Lido. We will see, won't we? Here's rocketpool.net. I think this is the same Rocket Pool. I can't wait till we get all of these different APY, staking APYs from all of these different organizations. Um, here's Rocket Pool, Decentralized Ethereum Proof of Stake Proof of Stake Network. Yep, this is great. Stake your ETH, stake and run a node, build on us. Yeah, it's, if well, if you can build on Rocket Pool, then it seems like they have a few more features than Lido. But we'll see. We'll wait for Lido to come out. So I wanted to make sure everyone knew about Lido, L-I-D-O. There it is, Anchor. Squanchy says Anchor is also a competitor as well. Awesome. So we've got a lot of ETH 2.0 staking um, solutions out there. Actually, I'll take note of those um, ETH 2.0 solutions. I'm going to note those down later. Polymarket. haven't really read much about Polymarket. Um, but it looks like stage two of the HQ beta is live, so we're still in beta on that. Bet on your beliefs. Love betting. Uh, today we're saying goodbye to compiling cryptography dependencies when working with Ethereum. Not quite sure what that means. They build open source software to unlock developer productivity in Ethereum. Cool. There you go, from Juan, um, from Juan Bennett. He can't wait to see pe what people build with Filecoin in the coming years. So this is definitely good for, for cryptocurrency. I'm a little jealous because I don't own any Filecoin, but um, that's that's fine. It's not fine, but we'll we'll buy some once we have a, a bit of a pullback, in my opinion. So if anyone um, who's big into cryptocurrency, um, Spencer Didwitty, 
um, Tim Woody, the, the NBA player. Have a look at him. He's created a coin called Galaxy, C-L-A-X-Y. Wow. Let's see what Filecoin's up to now. All right, we're back down to 99. Here we go. Oh, this is interesting from box mining. For those who don't know, FIL was massively shilled in China. And obviously, if you don't know, um, China has a lot of volume in terms of cryptocurrency. Um, I th that's interesting. But the volume's not that large. 8.8 .8 million in the last 28 hours. People just will ape in anything. Libra. Um, Libra is pleased to announce Ian Jenkins as Libra Network's chief CFO and CRO. Gosh, Libra is just pumping so much money into their organization. This one, this is a, here's a nice morning research call, kind of high level overview, top gainers in the Polkadot ecosystem. Acar A um, Acropolis, that's the best one I know. Well, if Chad's is one of your best game gainers in your ecosystem, there's XOR actually. That's good to see. Cool, there's Polkadot. Pause the video if you have, if you don't know any of those um, tokens, and you can you can look those up. Great. So it seems like the themes of today, um, kind of just wrapping up our morning call, is uh, the block a new dashboard. So head over to the block crypto. Where was that? And go to their data boards. Um, ethonline.org is still going from October to October 30th, October 2nd to October 30th. Um, Filecoin is certainly the big story of today. Um, people are going to be, so watch that closely. Um, personally, I'm going to wait for a pullback to get in. Have a look at the Graph, dot, graph Protocol and also their coin, GRT. Uh, we also talked about Yield Wars, which I thought was a fun, you know, novel approach, um, kind of just an experiment like pull together. I, Think it's no loss, so don't think your your funds are at risk. But obviously, do your own research. And actually, I'm actually not the biggest fan of when people say do your own research, and you know you're providing a a research or an educational show because that's my job. I should do the research for you. So I'm going to look up war and let you know if um you actually it it is no loss. I think it is. And then here's their data dashboards for for the block. So. That's probably it for me this morning, unless anybody else um, has has something to talk about in terms of what's what's the story of the day. But story of the day is definitely Filecoin. Um, it's massively shielded in China, farly overvalued in my opinion. But I do think we have software development here that's been in the works for for, for a couple of years, um, and I do think we have a lot of big names behind it. So head over to their website today, do a bit of reading. Um, and look, store, mine, build, blog. Yeah, this is a, they've got quite a large um, vision here. So great. Thanks everyone for, for, for tuning in. We'll see you um, probably tomorrow morning for uh, another morning research call. See you then.